Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm Rainbow, and welcome to Dimensional Walking. Today, I'm going to share an article that I wrote called Dregs of the Netherworld. It's in Paranormal Underground, November 2018 issue. And it's um, just information that I got from some of the contacts that I've had as an empath. So I thought I would kind of write uh, an, an article based on kind of some of the information that they gave me just kind of as a um, a way of conveying some of this information to people so that everybody kind of has an idea of what's going on out there. Now, this is just stuff that's been told to me um, and you can take it for what it's worth. It's information that I think was worthy to write down. So I'm going to go ahead and read the article so that you guys can kind of get the gist of, you know, what was told to me and see what you think and see how you feel about it. So here we go. Dregs of the Netherworld. I would like to tell you about some nefarious and formidable foes called dregs. The word dregs came about from Antioch, a djinn that spoke to me from the Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. He defined the dregs as dark entities, beings, or forms of energy that feed off, harass, or enslave humans. Throughout my journeys, I've spoken to not only the jinn, but also other entities and cryptids. They have all conveyed messages to me. Today, I will share tidbits of forgotten knowledge that ended up in the shadows of history and the side roads of trivial lore. So next, the human experience. We as humans, our infant lives, sometimes it seems can be a little at risk, only kept safe by protective parents and those guardians or guardian spirits that fade away as we get older. We are fragile after all, more so than other beings. We need an upper hand before we ever take our first breath outside the womb. Earth's frequency is our extra push and it's her vibration that enfolds us as we are born protecting us. Humans have an interesting fate. We are born completely wiped of any memory of any past life. And then as we progress through life, we strive to remember who we were and who we are becoming. The animals in the forest are born and reborn with a connection that is never severed from itself. Many sentient beings have, who, um, many sentient beings live immeasurable lifetimes knowing who they are so much so that we as humans need to live hundreds of lifetimes just to get a glimpse of ourselves. Our inability to access important memories quickly from early on becomes our downfall, which is why as humans, we are constantly striving for remedial answers to these lingering problems. This is our Achilles heel, and it sucks because many of these lost memories are golden, pure history, truth with no fillers, the actual account of what life was, is, and will be. Within the subsisting vivacity of existence, there seems to be a brooding and hushed darkness that we as humans have forgotten about, maybe out of fear or the desire to push distressing teachings aside. Here's some of these forgotten history, some of this forgotten history, or as some would prefer to say, the tall tales of yesteryear truth or fiction, you decide. The cryptid Tulak, who was a dogman, was quite the silent type. But what little he did open up to me about was surprising. There are fewer dogmen now than ever before, he said. Their presence here is constantly being disturbed by a very weird outside source. This source is a predatory cryptid with drag characteristics, unlike anything the dogman has seen. I think this creature has a DNA from both Sasquatch and Dogman, in addition to an unknown alien DNA. And I believe this is what Michael talked about, um, Creature X, that um, some unfortunate people actually experience in the woods. Whether this problem is a result of manipulated genetics, I just wonder who and what this predatory creature is. One has to wonder who is its master, or if it's a self-serving and evolving entity out of control. So this was something called the predatory cryptid. So predatory cryptid creature X, is it out there? I think so. Michael and I both believe in creature X and we think that it, it actually, as 
a Sasquatch named Loki also told me about Preacher X and said that it is um, some type of cryptid that was created um, that has alien DNA and Sasquatch DNA. And he said it's very dangerous. They even have to worry about it as well. Next, dark entity. The Jin Antioch was an odd fellow. I was never comfortable with his communication with me because I knew he despised humans and I just happened to be a human. I often wondered why he offered up a plethora of info. I didn't pay much attention, which some researchers would find unprofessional in our field, but this particular contact unnerved me to my core. And he was um, sometimes unrelenting, but Jin energy is um, probably as close as you can get to something very dark that isn't a demon. And I know people are going to argue with me that jinn are not demons because in Middle Eastern lore, they are. That's what they call a demon. But Antioch said they are not. They are archaic. And they were created along with the archangels. And they are, you know, they, they have a relationship with the archangels. They know each other. Yeah, I, I have to, to just say, take that what it's worth. Um, I'm not going to argue with anybody about it, but that's just what he told me. Imagine if you can creatures who feast on humans. They are not demons, but something that crossed over from another dimension, waiting for the chance, the opportune time when the veil weakens, barely able to hold its form. Imagine a being that can occupy a body and invite others like it to occupy the same body at will. They are calculating and cunning way beyond the dark entities that exist here already. Humans are their prime food source, and all they have to do is to focus on one person at a time. They basically have a food source that is endless. What is interesting is that these beings are manipulating and manifesting in ominous ceremonies. What is interesting is that these beings are manipulating and manifesting in ominous ceremonies. And I, I want to make something really clear here. I, I oppose Ouija boards. I, I can't tell you how many times I, I have talked about this because so many of these things come through with people's ignorant intentions of trying to access the theory of world through Ouija boards. And I just wish we could just get rid of them. I just don't, I just don't like them because they create so many problems that people like me have to deal with. You know, a lot of people will bring stuff through with Ouija boards and then they just leave it. And then they leave the problem for somebody else to fix or resolve. And I just find that so um, un ir irresponsible for people to do that. So if, you, if anybody is ever going to do the Ouija board, um, learn the rules and understand how to open and close a Ouija board. And if you get scared, just close it off and just, you know, just throw it away. Uh, I would prefer it, even if people didn't even use them, but I know people are going to that's just who they are, but I hate Ouija boards. And this is saying, saying that. Um, so let me say this, this sentence one more time, third time. What, it, what is interesting is that these beings are manipulating and manifesting in ominous ceremonies, Ouija boards, darkened rooms, silent roads, and the, and the imagination of script writers and storytellers alike. Dark incantations, ceremonies, and summoning is all it takes. And that is it. It's that simple that that's for these things to come through. They just need an invitation and they will take the invitation any way that they can get it. They are taking darkness to a whole new level. And the very people who think they can get in on the action will eventually find that they are nothing more than food to these beings. We are not at the top of the food chain by any means. And in any way, and in many ways, we are a del delicacy for these creatures, which I, I think is really true. I think that, you know, humans with our emotional highs and lows, which I've stated before, make us, you know, fantastic food source for a lot of these dark entities. What makes them extremely scary to me is the fact that they are not demons, as we know demons to be, but dark entities that take darkness to a whole new level. So I think if you look at interdimensional beings or just dimensional beings, you look at, you look at things that are maybe inner earth um, and these things come out. Who knows? Who knows what we're coming in contact with as, as humans? So just be wary of whenever you do stuff like this, what you're dealing with, because a lot of people who do ceremony eventually get bit in the butt by it because whatever you bring out there or 
into the world, it's going to remember who you are and it'll always know how to find you. There's like a little marker, I believe, that people have with them. And whatever dark entity they bring out into the world, it can always find them. So just be wary of that. That's just my opinion, of course. That's just me. Um, next, I have the mesh of golden tubes. Are we slaves on this planet? I was shown a mesh of yellow and gold tubes that were woven around the earth by archaic beings that have a penchant for creating unusual prisons. The tubes glowed and pulsated as they were all alive and, and sentient. I saw many human souls trying to fly out of the mesh. When the mesh would sense they were trying to escape, it would extend itself and send off a vibration that would pull the souls back into itself. There was no escape. And I saw that I was trapped just like everybody else. I remember this too, um, to the nth detail uh, to this very day. And I this was... Um, a vision that I had seen years ago. Um, and it's it's a, a mesh that is is thick tubes that are alive and pulsating. And it looks like um, a mesh that's about that big around. And um, it just looks like gigantic, or I mean, extremely humongous worms linked together that are pulsating um, with each other. And whenever I saw, I saw hundreds of, of souls trying to get out and just flying, actually flying out. Um, and then this mesh would just extend out and just pull them back in. And uh, I, I felt like I was looking at it actually from a spacecraft. I don't know where I was at when I was looking at it, but it was like, I was looking at the planet and I was seeing this mesh and it was really scary. And I thought, oh crap, that means that I'm stuck here too. So that'll be the one thing that I try to figure out before I die how to get out of here so that I don't have to kind of keep coming back. So that would be very interesting for me, but it's just food for thought. If you don't agree with me, that's okay. But this is something that I did see. Shapeshifter, the Dre called the shapeshifter can be dark or light depending on their intention. The dark shapeshifters do an ancient ceremony that steals the life force of a targeted individual. The individuals are usually young, but can be adults as well. From the start to finish, it usually takes a year to complete the actual ceremony. Now, this is also something I'm going to, a little caveat here. I'm going to just say this has to do with skinwalkers. Now, to me, a skinwalker is a dark shaman, but part of what they do is they, they do a ceremony. Um, that takes, a, like I stated, a year, but it's a lot of preparation for what they do. And that's the part that many Native Americans don't, maybe if they don't know, don't wanna talk about because they don't um, wanna attract this kind of negative energy to them. And I understand that, but I'm letting you know because I think that when stuff like this is out in the open, that uh, it no longer can hide in the open kind of in a way, because if people sense and know something, but they never say anything because they're afraid of it, then that gives this thing or these skinwalkers or dark shamans, that gives them more control and more power. And I'm just not willing to do that. I'm not willing to do that at all. So I'm just putting it out there. It is dark and sinister. I can't go into details of what the ceremony entails because I would fear for my own safety if I did so, and I do know the details, um, I've shown the details. I'm not going to say the details because um, like I stated, family, but I'm willing to say enough about it to kind of put it out there. Um, one thing that I was shown in the ceremony is that um, we have to protect our children. We have to protect the children um, as adults in communities and villages, we have to, to protect our children. And for me, I'm a warrior for the children. And uh, when, I, when I can or I sense anything is going on, I will, I will say something and I'll do whatever I have to do to protect the children. And that's as far as I'm going to say on that, but um, just be wary of these kind of 
people, um, especially with children. And that's, that's, that's important to remember. I witnessed the end part of the ceremony by mistake. I'm an empath. And sometimes when I venture off with my dream body, I get caught in the dark webs that ex extend beyond into the ethereal world. The shapeshifter I witnessed maintained his youth and age and was by today's standard, standards an average guy in his 30s. In reality, he would be hundreds of years old. I believe he is a cousin to the vampire of old, depending on which continent such a creature exists it can take on many forms and that's something else i wanted to say is i truly believe the skinwalkers are not any different than vampires i think the way that they keep themselves alive um the it, it's a the food sustenance it has it has to be humans and that's just what we are and that's not any different than a vampire um, i think there's varying degrees of the differences between them, but I think that at the end of the day, we're food source for both. So that kind of makes them cousins to me. So. The Kraken, the drugs called the Kraken, an entity that I was shown a few years ago. When you see a Kraken, it's a bad omen. He didn't look like the monster in Clash of the Titans and he looked, but he looked more like an old man with a mustache and a beard. That was really strange to me. I thought, well, this isn't a scary looking dude. And they're like, oh, well, now he is. He had a full head of hair that was long past his shoulders. He had three octopus legs for the lower half of his body. That was a little creepy. Yeah, that, that was. But I still, you know, if, if you look at folklore or fairies or whatever, you know, there's a lot of different creatures out there. And I just, you know, I don't try to try to... It, I don't think of all of them as something very scary, but I was told that this, this particular um, being, being the Kraken, is, is just not good for the planet. Having him in our timeline means that the fluctuation between the possibilities of dimensions, um, that he, no, I take that back. Having him in our timeline means that we have fluctuation between the possibilities of time of, po I can't even talk. Having him in our timeline means that we fluctuate between the possibilities of dimensions. He reminds me of old man time, except for the fact that he is an entity that messes with timelines and changes the course of parallel universes. So I think that uh, he's already done it because I think that there's people who uh, have talked about remembering things a little bit differently, um, like mirror, mirror on the wall you know, the, that type of thing with the Disney movies and what things are being said and what certain people remember them being said other ways. So I think our timelines have meshed in with another timeline. I think we're kind of not just parallel, but we're kind of pushed into each other. I think that's what this thing does. Let's see here. Um, let's see. He does become a heavyweight for Mother Earth and he affects her ability to spin on her axis. Some of these drugs are obvious, but others might transform into unassuming forms that seem no more harmful than a ghostly apparition. Follow your gut so you can determine what does or does not feel right. So back on to the Kraken, um, what I understand from this is that um, when he comes into a timeline, if I can remember this correctly, uh, and he alters it, he alters the future, which is not good for us. So if we have some strange things happening now, which we are actually with weather, but we know that that's climate change, but maybe there's more extreme things happening because he's, he's altered the timeline and maybe certain things should have happened that didn't. And while we might think that's great, down the line, it may not be so great. So when this thing comes around, it's, it's not a good thing. So anyways, maybe that's, you know, I... I I don't really know what to think about the Kraken, but I do know that um, if he changes our history or changes the future or changes choices and decisions that alters us into another direction that maybe we shouldn't go into, that's not a good thing. But that's just what I think. And you know, this is, this is something that I saw that's interesting, but I don't really know what to think about it, to be honest with you. Um, if you have seen something like this or you've heard of something like this, share it with Michael and I because 
I'd like to hear more about this, see what you think. Ending my article, we are the keepers from Mother Earth. There will always be the shadows of nefarious oddities called dregs who silently watch and wait. We just need to keep torches of light shining so that at the end of the day, we illuminate the night with a vigilant symbol that says we are not alone. Knowledge is a key, but knowing we are not only connected to Mother Earth, but each other is our saving grace. So, yeah, I mean, to me, it's as a, as a society, as a, a population of people on the planet, uh, I don't feel so alone in dealing with stuff like this, but, uh, and we're all dealing with it at various degrees, but at the end of the day, um, we've got to figure out how to resolve a lot of this stuff and maybe we can do it together. I, that's at least that's my hope. So I hope I didn't um, mangle that article too bad. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. When you write, it's so much different than when you, you read stuff. And I tend to read too fast. And then I, I tangle my words together. And uh, I try to slow down. But uh, I haven't read stories since my daughter um, was in school. And I used to be really good at it. And now I'm... I'm uh, having to, to try to slow myself down a little bit more so I can kind of get the words out there. But anyways, thank you for your patience. Hope you enjoyed the article. If you have any questions, you can email Michael and I at dimensionalwalking at gmail.com. If you can, um, subscribe to Mar uh, Paranormal Underground. That would be great. It's a great uh, magazine and I greatly appreciate Cheryl and Chad for publishing my work. And if you have any stories to share, share them. Uh, you can always leave a comment down below and share these um, little tidbits of articles with people. Um, Michael and I would greatly appreciate it. So wherever you are, I hope you're having a wonderful day or night. And until we see you again in another video, have a blessed day or night and thank you for watching and take care.